Hello, YouTube viewers and random Star Trek fans or Trekkers or whatever. With thanks to the one company, today I'll be reviewing this, which is the Phaser Universal Remote Control. And here it is in its packaging. The cardboard box is very simple. We get the Star Trek logo down the side with the original series written below it. It is the Phaser Universal Remote Control, and you can see a large image of the Phaser in yellow on this black background, which extends to the side of the box. On the other side, we get the Starfleet badge with the Enterprise inside it. The back gives us a look at the Phaser, as well as some details on it, and if you want to read those, go ahead and pause the video. Inside the box we get this awesome protective transit case which houses the phaser. Its design is great and it fits in with the Star Trek universe. Around the edges on the front we get these four indented circular sections while on the back the circular sections protrude. So these cases are practical and stackable. I love that. In the middle we get some nice printed details plus this authorization panel in which you can fill in your own personal details if you were so inclined. Opening the box you can see that the phaser and its accessories are safely secured in this soft grey foam. It's separated into three parts but it's fairly simple to Construct. First of all, attach the handle to the Phaser 2 body. To do this, line up these two tabs with the holes underneath and slide it into place. Next, you'll want to screw this bolt at the bottom to secure the handle. Fortunately, a small screwdriver has been included in the set, and I love the attention to detail here. It even has the NCC 1701 registration embedded onto it. So we screw in the bolt until it's nice and tight. Next up, take your Phaser 1 section and slot it into the top until it clicks into place, and there you have it, your fully constructed Phaser. The detail on here is beyond incredible. The one company's care and attention yet again shines through. They've created this phaser from 30 scans of the last known hero prop, and boy does it show. At the front you can see the pointed emitter with a silver barrel around it, which contains great detailing of those lines protruding around it. What's more is that this barrel can be turned, which extends the emitter. And just above the barrel you can spot the infrared emitter. On one side we get this small circular silver panel. When you twist this to the side and pull it out, it reveals the dilithium crystal inside the phaser, which is just such an excellent little bonus. On the underside there's a silver trigger button, while this simple raised line design runs along the sides, making it look sleek in a retro sort of fashion. The handle is constructed from metal, which gives the phaser a nice weight to it and it feels genuine and realistic to hold. The top features the aspirator grill and sight, which looks excellent in this metallic silver. It can be raised via the thumb wheel, turning the wheel forward will cause the grill to raise forward and the sight to emerge. Next to this we get the mode selector button, but a little more on that later. On the end section you can spot the control dial, which is numbered from 0 to 9. On the side this golden rod can be pressed to detach phaser 1 from the phaser 2 housing. And finally on the end these elongated metallic silver slits have been added. So overall for detail, it's perfect as every slight detail of the prop has been painstakingly recreated here. Turning to features, to switch on the phaser, press and hold the mode selector button. Practice mode. It will make a powering up noise while the mode selector will glow red. It will then say which mode it's in and the letter representing that mode will remain steadily lit. I really like this as it helps to keep track of which mode the remote is in. Practice mode does what it says on the tin. It allows you to practice using the remote's gesture based functions. To do this, you must hold the trigger button in. Each time a gesture is performed correctly, the phaser will say which movement has just been performed while the emitter will light up. Push, pull, left, right, up, down, tilt left, tilt right, double press, control mode. Red memory bank. Pressing the mode selector again will cause the phaser to enter control mode. It features four memory banks in total which are colour coordinated, red, green, blue and yellow. I really like how the mode selector will change to the actual colour of the selected memory bank, again another great visual way to keep track of which bank is currently in use. Setting up the remote control couldn't be simpler, just press the mode selector down three times, holding it down on the third press. Entering programming mode. Red memory bank. Now you can teach the phaser your TV controls via your remote. Pull the trigger in and perform a gesture. The phaser will recognise which gesture this is and the infrared emitter will light up green. Then holding your remote up to the emitter, press which button you would like the gesture to operate, let's say the on off button, and if successful the phaser will say OK. okay. See I told you it would. <laughs> then press the mode selector once again to exit programming mode. So now when you pull in the trigger and perform that gesture, it will switch your TV on or off while making a firing sound. This is an excellent piece of technological wizardry as it allows up to 9 button operations from your remote to be transferred to the phaser, so it can control the volume of your TV, B, 
be used as arrow buttons, skip forward or skip back through chapters on a Blu-ray player, mute the TV and so much more. It can get quite irritating having to program in each command manually, but it is worth it in the end and as I said the setup is fairly straightforward. The gestures all work well and the phaser is highly responsive to each one. The additional four memory banks also allow you to operate four electronic devices at any one time, providing that they are infrared controlled of course. On top of this, the phaser also offers a TV be gone mode. Pulling the trigger twice, then holding on a third pull will cause it to cycle through a series of infrared codes, which should turn off almost any TV without the need for programming. The phaser also offers a quad control mode. To activate this, turn the setting dial to zero, so instead of making a firing sound effect, it will just emit a simple click when a gesture is performed. Speaking of the setting dial, let's switch over to FX mode. This essentially makes the remote behave more like a prop replica and allows you to, well, play with it. So pulling the trigger will just cause it to emit some fun sound effects while the emitter lights up. The particular sound the phaser makes all depends on the number which the dial has been turned to. This also works for the sound the remote makes while in control mode. So let's have a cycle through its various effects. A small motor will cause the phaser to vibrate when the trigger is pulled, adding to the roleplay experience. And what's great is when the remote is being fired, the dilithium crystal inside will light up the same colour. Another added bonus here is that when the dial is set to zero, it will emit no sounds, but instead when the trigger is held in and a gesture is performed, it will emit one of nine classic sound effects from the original series, which is a wonderful little easter egg. I'm slightly annoyed that the communicator or beaming sound effects weren't included, but still, what has been provided here is really brilliant. What's more is that a stealth version of the TV Be Gone mode can be accessed here as well. While the setting dial is at zero, pull the trigger twice and hold on the third pull. Again, this will cause the remote to fire a sequence of infrared codes, only this time it will make no phaser blasting noises and instead will just click. The remote also offers a lock function. To activate this, click the mode selector button four times. The phaser will then prompt you to enter a four digit lock code which you can do by turning the dial to any of its numbers then clicking the trigger button. Repeat this another three times and your four digit number will be entered. The instructions go into further details on how to erase, reset and disable this feature. The volume of the phaser can also be raised or lowered. Click the mode selector button six times then turn the setting dial to turn the volume up or down. Nine. Phaser 1 can also be detached from the grip by pressing in this gold button on the side. It can still fully function as the TV remote when undocked from Phaser 2 as a button on the bottom can be pressed in, however obviously the dial control options have been disabled. Undocking Phaser 1 also allows you to charge it. A USB cable has been included in the set which can be plugged into any USB port. The other end is plugged into the back of the phaser. It will acknowledge that it's charging with a vocal confirmation. Power cell charging. While the C on the mode selector button and the infrared emitter will begin to blink red on and off. This will then change to a flashing green to indicate that it has been fully charged. Finally, the remote also comes with a base. It's fairly simplistic to look at it, just a rectangular slab of metal with USS Enterprise standard issue phaser engraved into it, while a soft material has been attached to the underside to prevent it from damaging or scuffing any surface that you choose to display it on. But the remarkable thing here is how the phaser is attached to the base. This raised section is magnetic, so the bottom of the handle attaches to it and holds it in place. This makes for an awesome display, as it allows the phaser to be presented when positioned upright. Doing a size comparison, you can see that this is technically one of the largest TV remotes produced by the Wand Company, as it's certainly much bigger than the Doctor Who Sonic Screwdriver versions. However, when compared to the Phaser 1 mode, you can get an idea of the real size of the electronic components.
So, overall, what do I think of this remote? Well, unbelievably, the one company have done it again and produced another masterpiece. Their work just keeps getting better and better. If you've seen my review of the 10th Dr. Screwdriver, you'll know just how much I loved it. But this phaser has just gone above and beyond. As well as all of those brilliant motion control features from previous remotes, this phaser just adds to those. I particularly love that the trigger has to be pulled as well as moving the phaser in order for that gesture to work. It saves on gestures being performed by accident. One of the control features involved involves clicking the trigger twice, which really makes it feel like you're using it to manipulate the device you're using it on. Speaking of which, the sound effects in FX mode are just extraordinary. Not just the iconic hidden starship sounds, but also the phaser blast noises. Again, it's excellent that the trigger must be pulled to activate them, as this really makes it feel like a prop replica. It's the perfect blend of replica and remote, boasting functionality and fun, and contains more options than a Swiss Army knife. A genuine must-have for all Star Trek fans, this is some of the one company's best work to date and I can't wait to see what they offer up next. And so that brings us to the end of this review. Once again, a major thank you to The One Company for sending this out to me. For more information, click the link in the description below. I really hope you liked this review. If you did and you're new to my channel, please hit subscribe for more videos. Keep up to date with all my latest news and reviews by liking my Facebook page and following me on Twitter. And please support me on Patreon via the link below. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>